All right, I am live, finally. Got the computer running. Hopefully you can hear me. Let me know if you can. The little light is on my mic, so it should be good. Anyway, uh, yeah, my computer, about 45 minutes before showtime, decided it had to update. Had to update everything, and it took forever. Got things moving. Got things set up. Had to deal with my cat running amok for the last hour. Right now she's acting all serene and calm and quiet, but she's been tear assing around here unplugging things as fast as I can get them plugged in. But hopefully we have things all set up and ready to go. Let me move myself on over to where we are. And we'll get this show on the road. Move my camera down from the high overhead shot to have here. And we'll get down to where we can see what's going on a little better. That ain't too bad of an angle. Now, Tina Lane got herself a gem pan and asked for a gem recipe on the Facebook page. So I decided, well, this would probably be a good time to make some gems. So I'm going to use a recipe from my, the light's really reflecting off that, my reprint of the 1893 Majestic Range and Cookbook book. And uh, we're going to make some Wheaton gems. I'll get to the recipe a little bit later. First, I want to show you some of these pans that I've got. Get this over here. Let me show you some of these pans that I've got. This is a New England style roll pan. It's a recast of some sort. More than likely, this is recast from a Griswold uh, New England style pan. You can see, hopefully, there's a little bit of a letter left on the end. And where it would say New England style Griswold, this has all been filled in. It's got a little bit of a gate mark on the back, which the Griswolds wouldn't have had. But it's a nicely made pan. And uh, for something like this, now these gem, these gem pans kind of started in the 1860s or so. They started getting popular. There were tin ones, stamped steel, tin plated pans. And two companies especially. This one here is a, hopefully you can see that, is a GF Philly company. That's a number 12. And... The other big company that really got these underway was N. Waterman from Boston. And this was patented April 5th, 1859. You can kind of see the patent date there. I think the Feely has a patent date on it too. No, it doesn't. But they were from Boston, uh, Waterman. And Philly was from uh, St. Louis. Philly and Excelsior. And mostly what they made were gem pans. Now, there are a million different sizes and shapes of these things. These are little golf ball shaped gems. You see a lot of the oval ones. You see a lot of the round ones. You get into eventually things like this. That's called a Turk's head pan, that shape. But there's literally dozens and dozens of different shapes, different styles of gem pans and uh, makers. Like I said, uh, Waterman and Philly were really the two that got the cast iron gem pans going in the 1860s, and they were hugely popular up into the 1940s. Now, the uh, Waterman pans, and Waterman was more of a department store type of deal, distributor. You also see some that say R&E manufacturing on them, and they were, uh, and they would have the same patent date on them, and they were officially listed as licensees. So it might have been that R&E actually made them, both under their name and under the Waterman name. They're usually well-made pans. They don't have gate marks. They were usually poured from the ends, and you can see Sometimes they're a little bit ground off. Usually they just kind of snap the ends off where the gates were, where they poured them. But the r &E and the Waterman ones are like that. But there are zillions 
of copies of the R&E and the Waterman style pans. They're usually fairly well made. They're usually from the same period. But this one here, you can see where it's been filled in, where it would have said, you know, Waterman or R&E. And they're gate marked on the back. They all have this open design with spaces in between the cups. That was a big, a big part of the patent was that having the spaces between them allowed air to circulate all the way through. You also see some like this. You can see it's filled in on that end. But on this end, they kind of filled it and added that little mark. And this is also gate marked on back. And let's see, one more I was going to show you. This one here has, it's hard to say if that's a 5 or an 8 or a B, but it's got a mark on the end. And that's pretty similar to a lot of the Waterman pans. Now, this Turk's Head pan, I've identified it once before. I'm pretty sure it's a lot. Don't do that, cat. You unplug my camera, I will skin you alive. You're in enough trouble already. You already owe me 35 bucks. Came home the other day, emptied my pockets, went in the bathroom, got out of my work clothes, came back, my money was gone. Cat's running amok. I can't find the money. Somewhere around here, there's 35 bucks. I'll be tickled when I find it. It'll turn up eventually. But in the meantime, I'm out good money, cat, and it's your fault. Anyway, I'm pretty sure this is a lodge. You can identify these because it has a W down here, and I believe that's number 12 on the end, or 12 or a 15. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's a lodge, maybe a BSR, I forget exactly. But that is a known maker. All the big makers, Wagner, Griswold, Lodge, BSR, made tons of copies of each other's styles pan. And uh, it can be kind of a rabbit hole figuring out exactly who made what and when. But like I say, these are popular from, you know, late, from about 1860 up into the 1940s. They made tons and tons of them. Everybody did. The ones I'm going to use tonight are this Philly and the Waterman. I'm not sure how big this recipe is going to turn out when I'm done, but let me get the rest of these out of the way. I'll kind of keep this one on hand in case I need to fill up a few extras. Well, maybe that Turk's head pan would work better. But let me clear these off. Let me get my... I had a spot. Where would it go? Over here. Let me get my ingredients ready, and we will make us some gems. This is a pretty simple recipe. Not a whole lot to it, really. Get this out. Uh, I need this. Here's my whisk. The recipe is written a little bit confusingly, but it makes sense once you uh, kind of read through it and figure it out a little bit. I can't really see the comments, but hopefully I'll get caught up on them when we're done here. <coughs> All right, I'll read you the recipe. Wheaton gems. Mix one teaspoon baking powder and a little salt into one pint of flour, which I got right here. Add, add to the beaten yolks of two eggs, one teacup sweet milk or cream. I decided to split the difference and went with half and half. A piece of butter melted, about half the size of an egg, which I figure is about a tablespoon and a half. The flour with the baking powder and salt mixed, and the well-beaten whites of two eggs. Beat well, bake immediately in gem pans in a hot majestic range oven, take out and send to the table immediately. So, what I've taken that to mean is... Trying to figure out my order here again. I'll separate my eggs. Okay, I gotta put my book down somewhere within reach in case I need to double check. 
I will separate my eggs. And I want the yolks in there. Put my whites in here. Now these, going by the recipe, are probably going to taste like a baking powder biscuit. But the texture, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to end up with because this should be more of a batter than a uh, than a dough. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how these turn out. Now I get that last little bit of yolk there, or egg, or white. It doesn't want to separate. Oh well. Broke my yolk a little bit, but I should get most of that white. Get rid of my eggshells. Now, got my melted butter sitting up here, staying melted. I'm going to beat these egg yolks a bit. Add my melted butter. Add my half and half. And add my flour and baking soda and salt. Probably should have switched to my spatula first. Get that stirred in. Now, I might need a little bit more half and half. I was kind of guessing because a teacup is a bit less than a regular cup, which is eight ounces. A teacup is a bit smaller, so eight ounces is a cup. So I went with three quarters, figuring about six inches, six ounces. Yeah, I'm going to give that a little bit more half and half. Let me grab that. Now, most of the rising from this will come from the baking powder, and the egg will also act as a leavening and make it rise a bit more. That's looking a little better. We'll see what uh, adding the egg does to it, the egg whites. Beat up my egg whites. The white bowls really wash out on camera. Yeah, they do. Uh, they do with that. It doesn't say how well beaten these eggs need to be or egg whites, but I'm guessing you're gonna want them fairly airy to help. Uh, to help this rise so they're beaten to where they're fairly white and foamy but they're not nearly to beaten to a peak stage you get rid of these and we'll beat this a little bit more Like I said, I'm thinking this is going to be more of a batter than a dough, so I want it fairly thin.
I were fairly close, but like I said, I'm going to thin this down to where I have, I think I'm looking for more of a pourable batter. But I could be entirely wrong. I've never made these before, so I don't know what I'm really getting into. just a little bit thinner. My flour, I made some pizza dough the other day and my flour is very dry so I think normally it would probably take a cup of uh, milk or half and half or cream but I think I'm getting closer to a cup and a half. Still a pretty thick batter, but I think we'll go with that. Like I said, I don't really know how these are supposed to turn out. So I don't want to get it too thin and too runny. What I'm going to do is use a little bit of Baker's Joy. That's a uh, flour and oil spray. And I really like it. I mean, it works really nice for, uh, for cake pans. I think this one's just about done. You just give it a good spritz. And your pan is oiled and floured. I should grab another spoon to help this along. You know, I think I'm going to thin that just a little bit more. There it is. I think I'm still just a little too thick, maybe. That's a little better. Now, I'll start filling up my pan. I'm thinking I want these full to the top, but I don't really know. It doesn't say how long these need to be in the oven either. I'm guessing they won't take very long, 10, 15 minutes maybe. I'll just have to keep an eye on them. Some of that extra scraped off of there.
And I think this should, I might have a little bit extra, but I think this will just fill this one pan. Should just fill the pan, actually. Oops. One more spot to go, and I'm scraping the bowl. because he's a little over full. Try and get my last little little bit out of the bowl. And that just perfectly filled that. All right. Into the oven we go. And I'll check on them every few minutes. Now, put my half and half away. Get that back in the fridge. And I'll call it 23 minutes on my, yeah, you like that, eh? Let's see if you're right. Hmm. The raw batter tastes like well, like a basic biscuit type of dough. So I think we're going to end up with something biscuit-like, but with a little butter and honey on them. They will be very nice. Let me move this out of the way. Shut my camera a little bit. And move the cat from the butcher block aside for now. And move the camera around so I can set myself down. something else in the way. That should be a fairly good spot for the camera. Forgot to turn off my light. Hang on. I'm a coming, I'm a coming. Always forget to do one thing. a little dim in here but not too bad ah anyway yeah we'll see how those turn out like i said i've never my base a little bit more so i can get where i need to be there we go yeah and i did catch one comment the uh 
bowls the white kind of blows out on them. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's his camera. I've never been able to get the white balance right on this thing. It always wants to blow out, even in fairly dim light. I mean, I got just two not very bright lights on, and, you know, there's plenty enough for me. It's nice for doing things in low light, but anything close to normal kind of lighting, it really blows the light out on it, which is kind of a pain. Did you sneak a weed dram? Actually, I might. Let me get down here. I've got... Uh, A little bit of liquor close at hand so i think i will have a little bit of a little swig of brandy oh look at that things look better already anyhow uh i'll try and catch up on some of the comments here i missed most of them messing around over there say hi to people mango nice to see you mango And uh, hopefully, you, hopefully these will turn out good. You can try something like this. You can make these. You don't necessarily need a cast iron gem pan. You can use a you know a muffin tin, something like that. Maybe half fill it, you know, because usually these are fairly thin. And you don't have to use this recipe. There's a million different recipes out there. A lot of them are more cake like. They have sugar. You know, they're sweeter. I'm sure you could use cake batter. You know, from a box, you could use brownie mix, something like that, make make little brownies. You could use uh, cornbread batter. You can make, uh, you know, little cornbread cakes out of it, which would be really cool for, you know, serving with, with a meal. Uh, making biscuits or a dessert. This is more of a biscuit-like recipe. You know, just going by the uh, recipe, it should have a flavor, you know, taste a little bit of raw batter there. Has a flavor a lot like a uh, a bacon powder biscuit, but since it's more of a batter, I'm not sure what the texture is going to be exactly. You know, instead of you know a rolled out dough, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, I got Rick Stambaugh, Cynthia Wesley, Corey Clark, Gary Henning. Good to see you. Uh, let's see, Mike Washburn. Apparently having problems with something here. I had a bench thingy, potting soil, baker's rack. Yeah, the white bowls really wash out of the camera. Yeah, like I say, it's the camera. And I've tried a million times getting into the settings. And you just can't, you just can't get it right. I mean, it's something right in the hardware of the camera, the way it works. You know, maybe someday I'll get a... Get a different webcam that doesn't uh, doesn't blow out the white quite as bad. Like I said, I mean it's great for something in lower light, like a, like I'm doing now, which is nice because it doesn't show all the junk in the background. Get off my keyboard, cat! You're lucky I got it turned off. Always got to remember to turn my keyboard off now because cats and keyboards they just they got to be on them. Uh, you want to see it in a lamb mold? Not sure what you want to see, but that would be kind of cool. I guess Cast Iron Chaos tried making some calzones. I didn't get a chance to watch it yet. Tried to make some calzones in his uh ow. Tried to make some calzones in his uh lamb mold, and it didn't quite turn out, I guess. But uh I did something pretty similar a couple of weeks ago with uh a waffle iron. You know, kind of making a calzone pizza waffle type thing. Turned out all right, you know, for a first try. But definitely needs some perfecting to get it to work right. And if I ever get it figured out, I'll show you here. Really a pain. I did it on my regular stove. And uh, that was kind of a mistake because it wants to overflow and smoke like hell. Something like that you would definitely want to do. Unless I get it figured out to where it seals up better and doesn't uh doesn't leak so much around the edges you know it would definitely be something you want to do on the wood stove because that would uh just let it fall into the fire and 
you don't have the smoke in the house. Uh, nice Pyrex. Yeah, I finally decided to, uh, I mean, I got, I had, you know, a half, you know, different bowls out of half a dozen different sets. Figured, you know, I like the Cinderella bowls, the ones with the handles on either side. And I figured I would uh, see if I could put together a couple of sets of those and, uh, you know, have actual sets and thin out some of the uh, 25 different bowls that I had. But anyway, looks like BSR handles getting kind of moving back. I have a question. I have a number 10 Griswold muffle, muffin pan. Got called, called to work, started etching. Can you save it? It's not terrible, but it's screwed up. Uh, not really a lot you can do with it. I mean, just keep seizing it, and it'll fill in some of that roughness. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, usually if you have something that's extremely rusty and you let it soak, you can let it soak overnight even. It won't really hurt it because it's already pitted. But if you have something that has a real smooth finish and the uh, the uh, vinegar starts to etch it, there's not a lot you can do to re-smooth it. But if you season it up good, it should work fine. You know, it's not going to be as shiny pretty as it used to be, but it'll still be useful. Uh, the ovals are sweet. Yeah, there's there's a million different uh, shapes and configurations. Some of them will have uh, four spots, then three, and then four, or three, two, and three. You know, there's a lot of different... There's, I mean, getting into uh, gem pans and baking pans, it's kind of a rabbit hole all on its own. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you can really... There's tons and tons of different styles, different types. I'm gonna go check my my things here. Get my little flashlight going. I should probably have that just so I can have a little more light over there. I'm gonna skip back to the end of the comments here. Let me see how these guys are doing. Well, they're rising up a bit, but uh, they haven't started to brown yet. These are a little bit thicker than the uh, than the oval ones are, so they might take a little bit longer. And while I'm thinking of it, I gotta grab a couple of hot pads for when those are ready to come out. Didn't have my hot pads ready, so I better get that. And my butter and honey. That there. Get myself a knife and plate. And that'll be all ready to go when they're time to come out. I uh, made a made a braised pork roast with onion and garlic and a number eight Sydney absolute pork tender. Cool. Uh, uh, after I had a chunk of that, uh, pork shoulder left over after I did the sausage last week. So I roasted that up. I used that crane. It's a copy of a BSR enameled, uh, chicken pan and roasted it up in that made a little honey cayenne glaze. And that was really good. I had some of the honey cayenne glaze actually left over because I did a pork roast at work. On the rotisserie and uh that honey cayenne glaze is really nice that it's got a real good flavor goes great with pork can do it with ham too uh any knowledge on a gate mark skillet with a bs company in the six o'clock position number eight uh Uh, who posted that? They posted a uh, gate marked, I think it was a a camp oven on the Facebook page that was B, I think, it would, I think the initials were BS. It might be the same company. If you're on my uh, Facebook page, kind of look around. You should be able to find it. Uh, the Facebook page is the Mudbrookers Members Group. 
on Facebook. And uh, <laughs> I just read it and I can't remember who posted it. But uh, with initials like that, it's probably uh, probably a fairly known manufacturer. Usually they don't have any markings at all on them other than like a number or maybe one one letter. So they can be hard to uh, hard to nail down, but that might be a known manufacturer. My savage predator is on the hunt. Yeah, she's been tearing around like she smoked a half pound of meth for the last hour. I mean, running all over the place, climbing on me, climbing on things, attacking every cord that I try to plug in. I bet dress off to sleep all day. Oh yeah, she'll settle down here shortly. Try and climb on me and go to sleep and then sleep for another six hours. Pretty basic cat behavior. Run amok for an hour or two and then sleep for six. Let's see. Wood stove oven. Do I have any issues with the heating e heating evenly? Uh, the big issue I have with it, especially like baking bread, is that there's a cast iron plate over the top of about three fourths of it, and when that plate gets hot, you get so much radiant heat that it wants to over brown things like bread. So I usually have to cover bread with tin foil so it doesn't uh, doesn't burn on the top before I'm ready before it's done. And uh, heating evenly with wood stoves, usually they're a lot hotter on the firebox side than they are on the other side. So you have to turn things fairly fairly steadily. And uh, like I said, with that cast iron plate over the top, it really wants to uh, wants to overheat and over overcook the top of bread, things like that. So I, sometimes I have to cover it with uh, with tin foil to keep it from overcooking but I mean it heats relatively evenly but you know you're gonna get more heat on one side than the other just by the way by the way it's built oh, your cat is preventing this keeping the blanket from slipping off the bed. She hasn't been on the bed yet that I've noticed, which is kind of surprising. I mean, the bedroom door is usually open, but she's uh, she hasn't climbed up on the bed, but I'm sure once she gets a little bigger, she'll be up there. Let's see. I'm going to check my, check my things again here. I shouldn't have a problem with these getting too done on the top because they're oh. I need a little more wood in my fire too. I think it feels like it's cooled off a bit. That's, that's a little smaller piece. Give her just a little bit more air. The, the oven hasn't started cooling off yet, but the fire feels a little bit cooler than it was before. So give her a little more air, pick it up a little bit. I am feeding it bigger chunks of wood because baking, you want more of a, a steady fire and a steady bed of coals, where if you're frying something, you want a real fast, hot fire. Feed it small wood so it burns fast throws a lot of heat real fast, where this I want it to be a little more of a slower, steadier heat. Let's see here. She's a good paperweight. Yeah, cats usually are pretty good for paperweights. She loves to sleep on the keyboard because I'm usually here and cats love keyboards. So, and, uh, it's always a challenge. Remember to turn the damn thing off so I don't get random things entered in, hitting the F buttons, and making the computer do things I don't really want it to do. I 
Uh, I got another square skillet made in Taiwan. It's fine. Looks like a BSR handle. Yeah, it's, I've got a uh, a square breakfast skillet. You know, it's divided into three compartments. I'm pretty sure it's uh, import, but it looks pretty similar to something BSR would make at any rate. Uh, where did I get my kitten from? Got him from outside. Uh, there's about usually six or eight feral cats that live outside, live on my porch. And this one was a kitten. She decided she was going to start following me around, getting underfoot every time I go outside. So I decided, well, might as well bring her in the house and make a house cat out of her. The squares are coming out of the woodwork. Yeah, I've seen, seen quite a few uh, square skillets for sale lately on the uh, Goodwill site. Uh, mostly Wagner. And uh, they usually go for about 40 bucks a piece. There's a couple of sizes. The bigger size has a little tab, a little lifting tab on the other side. But, uh, you know, they pretty typically go for around 40 bucks, give or take, you know. In the 30 to 50 range, but like I say, usually right about 50 or 40. Kind of new to your channel. I really like to use it. Wanted to know if I use enameled cast as well. Yeah, I do. And, uh, you know, with the old enameled stuff, you have to kind of keep an eye out for a few chips on it. Usually isn't going to hurt anything. Where you start getting into problems is where you have a lot of crazing and cracking in the... Uh, in the enamel, then you're going to run the risk of bits of it flaking off and popping loose while you're cooking on it. So something that's got a real lot of crackler to it, you know, the enamel's really crazed. You probably don't want to use that for cooking, but, uh, you know, a few chips here and there, some scrapes and scuffs usually aren't going to be a problem. But uh, enameled cast is great for when you're making something acidic. And you're going to slow cook it. You know, if you're going to really, you know, slow cook a tomato sauce or uh, make like a red wine braised beef, something or other, and slow cook it in the oven for a lot of time, you know, bare unenameled cast iron, it can attack your seasoning. You know, you get a lot of strip your seasoning off. So you're better off to use, uh, use something enameled for really acidic things. Hey, Papa Dan, good to see you. Tuning in on time, but the daughter called having serious car problems, so she had to call her dad. They got it through talking. Well, that's good. Always good to uh, be able to fix something over the phone instead of having to run and rescue somebody. Not too successful making a house cat out of her yet. No, she's, uh, you know, she's fine. She's friend friendly and cuddly when she wants to be, but, you know, like any cat worth having, she's a violent sociopath most of the time. So, uh, you know, she's a pretty normal cat. You know, she's young and full of energy, so, of course, she likes to, to uh, attack and torment things. I did get a little remote control car, which is off in the corner over there, which is a lot of fun chase her around with that and uh burn off some of the energy uh your lee crusade pot seems to stick to everything yeah enamel can be a little stickier than cast iron you know just make sure you use a little extra oil if you're going to fry something and uh a lot of times when i'm doing you know pretty much anything with a uh, dutch oven I'll, oil, I'll grease the sides of the uh, Dutch oven, you know, either with, uh, you know, cooking oil or whatever you usually cook with, you know, lard, Crisco, something like that. It helps to keep them from, uh, you know, because you get a lot more steam with a uh, closed Dutch oven than you would with a frying pan. So they're, sometimes they'll actually rust while you're cooking with them if you're not really, really well seasoned. And, uh, it generally seems to help just to, uh, you know, grease them up good before you uh, use them. I 
Luis has got you craving a Wagner chest pan, but how many do you need? Well, that's up to you how many you need. Impossible to really say. Cats love laser pointers. They'll chase the light all over the place. Yeah, I'm thinking of getting a little better remote control car. And, uh, you know, the one I got is one of those little, they flip over when you hit something. And they're kind of hard to steer, hard to control if you're actually trying to go somewhere with them. I think I might get something a little more drivable so I can put the run on her and chase her around the room with it. But, uh, yeah, they're a lot, of, a lot of fun. I got a couple, some little uh, jingly ball things, and she chases them around until she loses them under something. So, uh, cast iron's been kind of drying up around here for some reason. Good thing that while people are looking elsewhere, you found a 14 Griswold for two bills. Figure you wouldn't find another for that. No, you won't. I mean, usually number 14 Griswolds, you're looking 800 to 1,000. So uh, 200 is a hell of a good deal. Uh, can chip enamel be fixed? Not that I know of. Uh, I do have one. It's a uh, Drew made in Holland enamel Dutch oven, and I've been trying to sandblast. The uh, enamel is real bad on the inside. It's pretty decent on the outside, though. But the enamel is real bad on the inside, and I've been trying to sandblast it. But the media I had was a real fine silica sand, and it took forever to get what I got off it so far. But I've changed it now to a, uh, it's a coarser, they call it Black Magic, Black Blast. It's basically a coal slag type of media, and it's a lot more abrasive and a good bit coarser. So I'm going to get back to that one of these days and see if it comes off any better. But, uh, there's not really much you can do for uh, for chipped enamel that I know of anyway. Better check my check my things. Get to talk and forget about things in the oven is never a good idea. Ooh, they're really rising up. Let me see. Nice and loose in the pan, but they're not really browning very good yet. I'll let them go a while longer and see what happens. I would have thought they wouldn't have taken nearly this long. It's been almost 20 minutes, but they're, they've really risen. I mean, they've blown right up in the pan. We'll see how they do, though. I want them to get browned up a bit better. They're not really uh, browned very well. Uh, before you forget, happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, it is almost. It's Mardi Gras today, too. Fat Tuesday. I don't have any beads, so... Afraid we can't uh, indulge in that tradition for Mardi Gras. Probably not drying up. Some more people getting there before you do. More and more new collectors every day. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a pain if you've been in it for a while and you're looking for something. But, you know, it's nice to see people enjoying cast iron themselves. So, uh, any re suggestions for removing cured JB weld from cast iron? Yeah, I saw that question too, and I still haven't gotten back to you on it. Uh, not really that I can think of. A good amount of heat might soften enough to where you can, you know, kind of scrape it off. You said you had a uh, handle that had been glued back on with JB weld. You're probably not going to find anything that will really, really dissolve it. But uh, with enough heat, you might be able to soften enough to get it apart and scrape it off. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, meant to take a lot of heat and a lot of abuse and not really come off. So I don't know if I can really help you a lot there. Like I said, just try and uh, heat it up with a propane torch. You know, you probably don't want to try, you don't want to get to the point where you're getting red hot. But on a handle, they can usually handle a fair amount of heat. So uh, you should be able to heat it up and see, you know, try and scrape it off. That would be, that'd be my best guess. So uh, your battery charger died for your E-Tank. Might get one of those floor models. There's a little 6 amp and took a lot longer even for the smaller iron. Yeah, uh, 
I saw one at Napa not very long ago. It was a manual floor charger, you know, put out a 40 amp steady charge. And uh, I think it was only like 169, maybe 170. Wasn't too bad of a price on them. Some, you know, the big floor model chargers can get pretty pricey depending on the brand name. And uh, this one here I got at a pawn shop, I think, for 80 bucks. The uh, the fan was getting bad in it. It's got a cooling fan inside there. But it was just a 5-volt uh, a computer fan is all it was. So I had another one. I just swapped the fan, plugged the, fan, the, uh, the computer fan in it, and it worked just great. Uh, lost her 19-year-old cat, too, too old for the energy of a kitten, unfortunately. Yeah, it can always be kind of a pain. That's why I didn't get another puppy is because I really don't have time to uh, to train them properly. And, you know, with my work schedule, I'm either gone or asleep a lot of the time. Cats can pretty much take care of themselves. You know, they're pretty independent critters right from the start. But... Uh, yeah, you know, it's, yeah, I don't really have the time to do right by a dog. I uh, just need to find number 11 and 12 yet. Don't think I ever find, count on finding a two for good price. Yeah, you, number twos aren't very common and they're very expensive when you do find them generally. up here uh, it's really a mess yeah you would like i said i i saw the comment but i just haven't gotten back to uh jb weld equals grinder yeah you're probably gonna have to uh might have to do some grinding on it too real carefully i mean if it's the handle you might end up just having to uh you know cut it right out with a grinder and uh either welding or brazing the handle back on but like I say, you know, try heating it first and see if that uh, softens it up enough that you can get some off at the moment. Uh, the four model battery charger. Yeah, if it's a, uh, you know, if it's a manual charger, not an automatic, you know, if it's at Goodwill, it may definitely be worthwhile. Like I said, I got mine at a, uh, at a pawn shop. That's another good place where you can find things like that. Uh, older non-electronics or non-electronic chargers are the best. Look at farm estate auctions. Yeah, that's that's another uh, another good source for them. Uh, use a DC power supply and it's a workhorse. Yeah, a lot of people have been using them. Yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't tried one yet because I got the battery charger and that works just fine. But DC power supplies are. Uh, are a definite thing and they do work pretty good from what i've seen of them uh the cat was mean no telling how many times it bit dan for no reason yeah they can be like that my sister had a cat like that she got from the pound loved her anybody else it would just walk up and bite right into you can't imagine why it wound up in a pound Uh, it's because he was declawed, bite more when they're declawed. I suppose they do. I've uh, been thinking about using those. Unfortunately, the E-Tank and the Lie Tank are frozen. Yeah, I uh, set up my lie bath in the bathroom during the winter. Otherwise, it's out on the porch and pretty much done with the, uh, the E-Tank until spring. I got a vinegar bath, but it's something that I really need to clean up. But I usually kind of do all of my uh, e-tanking over the summer. Uh, do you have a cast iron griddle like a blackstone outside? Uh, no, I don't. You know, I have a few uh, cast iron griddles, but I don't have don't have anything outside. Let's see. 
use a lot as soon as the lie tank gets cold, too cold, and done for the season. Yeah, a lie will freeze. You know, a lie tank, you know, will freeze up about 30 degrees, a little bit colder than plain water will. But, uh, yeah, they'll freeze up if you leave them outside when it starts turning cold. I uh, wish you had a safe space to set up a lie tank. You don't get fumes from a lie tank, but you do need to uh, have it somewhere out of the way and keep it covered to keep kids and animals out of it. All right. We, oops, I almost unplugged myself. Complaining about the cat to unplugging things. I'm getting tangled up. That should be just about done. Browning good on the one side. They're getting real close. I got to uh, turn them. I'll show you where we're at so far. They're getting pretty close. They're more done on this side than on the other, of course. So I'll turn them, give them a few more minutes. so you can see the bottom. But we're real close. Almost at an hour. Spin that pan. Yes, I did. They're finally browning up a little bit. The oven's at about, about 350. Probably would have been a little bit better. You know, it would have been a little bit hotter, but you live and you learn. Uh, your E-tank and lie tank are outside, haven't completely frozen. Warm back up, it started back up. It's been, I, I probably could have left it outside most of the winter. I mean, it's been really warm here, but it's been enough below freezing at night that it would have uh, sort of froze up overnight and thawed out some during the day and probably not got a whole lot done. Uh, today was fast knock day, PA. Pennsylvania Dutch potato donuts. Thousands and thousands are made here and sold. Made and sold here in Pennsylvania. Sounds good. I made some uh, some cornmeal donuts a while back. And they were real different. They didn't, you could taste the cornmeal in them, but they weren't like uh, cornbread. They're pretty good. Do -do. Back up here, too many lives at one time. Yeah, you know, you know, kind of settled in Tuesday and tried to stay here. Hopefully, it's out of the way of most of the people anyway. I didn't say thanks for the uh, two dollars that who's on the board sent me earlier. So, uh, better cover that if you're still watching hubs. Sorry about that. Never thought you'd be watching cooking channels. Even watch some Italian girl with cleavage one day. I had a maple donut. Never had a fa fast knot. Tried the paski, but we'll make it again this weekend. Polish Jesus encourages it. Uh, wouldn't the freeze thaw harm the cast in a lie tank? It could if it froze really hard, you know, to where it was, you know, pressing on the pressing on the iron. But uh, it it freezes a little bit slushy, you know, especially if it's dirty. I mean, don't get a hard, you know, block of ice kind of freeze to it. But it is solid enough that it could probably cause problems if it froze with the iron in there. Uh, your tank has been empty since November. Yeah, we got a bit of cold spell in November, so I dumped everything, and uh, it hasn't been all that cold since. Uh, 
Uh, will there be a show next week? Yeah, there will be a, be a show next week. It should be pretty steady. You know, my work schedule, I'm finally settled in and working on just, uh, you know, a straight midnight shift. So I can do it before work on Tuesday. I got to co- go to work tonight, but I'm off every other Tuesday too. So works out pretty good. Should be, should be pretty steady with the uh, show schedule. Check on the biscuits. I just did. Should take about another two minutes here or so. Should brown up a little bit more on that side and should be good. Rick Stanball, you're being set up. Well, can't really help you with that too much. I think I'll try and swing over this way a little bit more. I do got myself in my own way. Be a little bit better. Tip that down. Got my little flashlight here so I can see what's actually going on in the oven. Yeah, that looks good. I'd say those are about done. I'm gonna take them out, let them cool for a minute or two on the on my little racks here. Here's what they look like just out of the oven. Browned up pretty nice. Let them cool for just a couple of minutes. And they should dump out. I know some of these are definitely loose. But the tops are kind of split too. So we'll see how it goes. You know, you're just all ready to get in there, ain't you, cat? Wheel my board over here. Give that just a minute. Uh, I think I got everything. And make sure I'm not in my own way. I'm gonna turn the light on over here. Let's see if that's gonna uh, blow everything out. But, all right, kind of facing opposite the camera where I want to be. Give a little bit of a bump, see if they come loose. And, whoop, got one four. Always got to be the one. Well, I'll deal with him later. Anyway, of course, now the camera's going to be blown out from the whiteness, but there's what they look like done. Wheel over a little bit here. And try one plain, see what they taste like. Got kind of a biscuity interior. Hmm. I'll peel a couple of them open here quick. Give them a little bit of butter. Yes, this this recipe is got a different texture than most biscuits. But it's uh, definitely got a biscuit sort of flavor. I'm going to turn that light off. That's just too blowing out. A little bit too blown out right there. But anyway, there you can see a little bit better what the color looks like. They're browned up nice. Not quite as browned on the bottom. Probably should have had the oven a bit hotter, but I got some butter on there. Give them a little drip of honey. And give them a taste.
get that chewed down. I'll grab one and we'll come back over here. Got the cat all excited. Ah. It's down here. Tip her down a little bit more. Yeah. Still want to blow it out. But they did brown up pretty good. And plain, yeah, they've got kind of a, you know, kind of a uh, bacon powder biscuit flavor to them. The texture is different than a, uh, than a rolled out biscuit would be, but they're really tasty. And like I said, you can uh, you can use a cake. Get that down. You can use a cake batter to make these cornbread batter. This recipe, there is tons of recipes out there in old cookbooks and looking around. So you can definitely use, uh, you know, your gem pans are going to be a useful thing. These probably would have cooked a little faster in the uh, flat oval ones because they're a lot thinner. And I probably should have my oven a bit hotter. It's at a hot oven, you know, and on this, you know, 350 is usually considered a hot in the hot range probably should have went with a very hot oven i would guess like 375 would probably would have been better for something like this maybe even as much as 400 and uh but it rolls nice it's a good recipe they rolls up nice they got a real nice texture to them they're uh, a bit lighter of a texture than uh than a rolled out uh bacon powder biscuit would be so they're definitely something worth making. A little butter and honey on them. Yeah. A little butter and honey on them. They're really, really good. So I definitely recommend making this. I'll put the uh I'll put the recipe on the uh when this comes up afterwards after it uh uploads. I'll put the recipe in the description. And I'll put it on the uh, Facebook page. Go ahead and join the Facebook page. If you're there, don't be afraid to ask questions, post pictures, anything like that. Go ahead and talk to each other. That's kind of the point. Cream chip beef on them. Yeah, that'd be good too. You could definitely use them like you would with this recipe anyway. Use them like you would any regular biscuit, you know, sausage gravy on them. They're really good with just butter and honey. Like I said, the texture is is different than a uh than a uh, rolled out powder bacon powder biscuit is it's a lot lighter it's more of a fluffy fluffy texture to them more of a cake like sort of texture but uh yeah these are definitely something worthwhile anyway like i said you know if you want to join the facebook page that's uh the mud brookers members group on facebook and uh you know don't be afraid to ask questions post things you know, generally talk to each other. I try to answer as many questions as I can. Sometimes I don't uh, get around to it right away, but I do try and, you know, I do check it out every, you know, a couple, few times a day, anyhow. Yeah, pass the biscuits. Go ahead and make yourself some, Rick or Raymond. They're definitely a nice little gem. Nice little gem thing. Like I said, you can use your gem pans for a lot of other things. You could make these in a uh, muffin pan pretty easily i would think bad suggestion start sending reg regional recipes to mud make them work for our companionship hey i've already sprung lutefisk on you guys don't make me uh get you into wisconsin cooking you got polish german and norwegian all coming together and strange things kind of happen but anyhow uh, we've been at this for a little better than an hour. These took a little longer than I figured. I thought they'd only take about 15 minutes, but it took a lot longer than that. So uh, I'll see you guys uh, next week. We'll have a show. And uh, you know, probably not going to cook anything next week. Might be a little bit more focused. It's kind of hard to juggle comments and commentary and uh, you know bake things at the same time. But it's a lot of fun. And hopefully you guys got to see, you know, interesting old cast iron in action in a wood stove. 
So I'll see you guys next time, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you then. Bye.